For today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how I painted this delightful little owl using just a few colors. He was so much fun, I was smiling the whole time I was painting this little guy. My supplies are really simple. I just have indigo and burnt umber, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red. And I like to start with the wet and wet technique. So I'm taking clean water and brushing it all over my owl. I'm gonna start with just the body portion of the owl, but making sure that some of the water blends into the legs for a better blending effect. I'm taking some burnt umber and just dropping it in in the shadow areas in the owl, underneath the wings and around the belly, and then taking some indigo and dropping that in to darken up the shadows even more. You can see it's so fun. The brown paint is just blending right into those legs naturally, causing a soft blended effect for us. This first layer is really just blocking in the darkest values on the little owl's belly. I'm also starting to indicate some of the darker shapes within the feathers. The first wash, it's really important that it's wet and wet so that it can look really soft and blended and we can add the details over the top once that's dry. You can soften edges as needed, but don't mess with it too much once you've got that first wash of color on. While that's beginning to dry, I'm using watered down indigo to paint some gray on the feet. I'm avoiding the claws for now because those are gonna be a little bit lighter and we're gonna go in with more detail later. You can use the tip of your brush to add a little bit of feather texture along those legs so that they look fuzzy rather than smooth. Now for the head, I'm going in with clean water and just painting carefully around the eyes for now. I'm dropping in some watered down burnt umber underneath the brow and around the beak. This is gonna be my first layer of color and we'll go darker in a little bit, but for now we're just building it up slowly, light to dark. I'm taking some burnt umber along the edge of the wing and just underneath the circular shape of the head. And I'm using a little bit of a scumbling motion with the tip of my brush so that it looks like feather detail and feather texture. With indigo, I'm starting to paint some dark spots in the owl's feathers. Because the body is now dry, we can go in with these detailed brush strokes and they'll stay put, they won't flow away. To soften those edges, I'm just using some water on my brush and just gently scrubbing against the edges of those spots so that they look more inset and blended in the feathers. Now I'm taking my size four round brush. I've splayed the bristles a little bit and I'm stroking in some very tiny brush strokes of burnt umber in the direction that the feathers are growing, which is a little bit out and away from the eyes. Around the beak, there are these furry brown little strands of feathers that are so tiny they almost look like fur and so I'm starting to paint those in. I always observe your reference photo. If you want something to look realistic, you need to make sure that your brush strokes are going in the direction that you see the feathers growing. So you might have to adjust your grip and change your brush and turn it and twist it as needed. On the top of the head, I'm just carefully painting around those white spots. Now the spots are not just circular shapes. They're all a little bit different and kind of rough. To make something look natural, you need to make sure that you're not just assuming you know what a spot looks like, but rather observing what you see in nature and trying to copy it as best you can. Before we go to the next part of the video, I just wanna let you guys know that this tutorial is available in real time. Just head over to emilyolsonart.com where you can access all of my fully narrated real-time tutorials for just a small amount per month. I also include a sketch and reference photo with those tutorials, as well as a list of all the supplies I use so that you can follow the exact steps to paint along with me. With the Fearless Artist membership, you have access to my watercolor jumpstart video course, which is the perfect place to start if you're brand new to watercolor. There's also a series of 20 minute tutorials that will help sharpen your skills and give you delightful frame worthy little wins in your watercolor journey and join our private Facebook group where you can share all of your amazing artwork and get feedback from other artists. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can see all the tutorials that are currently available and I'm adding more every month. All right, let's get back to the video. The inside of the eyes, I'm just using some watered down Gamboge Nova, which is just the yellow I happen to have on my palette, but you can use any warm yellow. 
And then for the nostrils, I'm using indigo and painting them on very dark. I've watered down my brush a little bit and I'm starting to add some details around the beak. I'm carefully making my brush strokes go up and down and avoiding a center spot in the beak that's catching the light. The tip of the beak, I'm using yellow ochre because it's a little bit more yellow. Now the head needs to be slightly darker. It looks a little bit unnatural being pure white. So I'm taking very watered down gray paint and just starting to add some shadow underneath the beak. Again, using my brush to create some feathers and some texture all inside of those shadows. I'm adding some shadows inside of the yellow of the eyes. Our little owl almost has a brow, creating a shadow over those eyes. So I'm painting that in and then darkening that brow a little bit with some more indigo. Always be sure to add these details once the layer underneath is dry. If you try to add it when it's still wet, your details will just disappear and basically wash out. The eyes, I had to make sure the yellow was completely dry before going back in with my dark black color. I'm creating this nice dark circle around the eyes and filling in the pupil completely except for these two little highlights. Those are still too bright, but once the black is dry, I'll go back in and darken those. Now I'm adding some more of that feather detail around the beak. He's starting to look a little bit more realistic, a little more 3D. As you add more contrast with strong darks and strong lights in your painting, it will start to look very realistic. Going in with just a few more tiny little brush strokes all around the circular shape of the head. Make sure there's some separation in your brush strokes and you're not just painting a single circular shape all the way around, otherwise it'll look a little bit fake. In those highlights, I'm darkening those with watered down indigo. Now that the head is done, I can go into the wings and start adding some more spots. I'm using burnt umber and indigo, my two main colors for this painting, and just alternating between warmer and cooler values depending on how much blue or brown I have in my mixture. I'm painting in the shadow underneath the wing and adding some stripes on the wings. I've changed my composition a little bit from the reference photo so that the wings are a little bit more even and both of them are tucked under. You can choose to change your reference photo or you can try to copy it exactly as you see it. I just liked the symmetry of having both wings going in the same direction. And so now I'm adding some shadows and just darkening up with a combination of indigo and burnt umber. And then for the really, really dark spots on the belly, I'm using almost straight indigo. Starting to intensify the shadows and add these black little stripey marks on his belly. Those look a little too stark, so I'm watering it down and softening them by just adding kind of a flat wash that's nice and blended over the top, and that's gonna help it look more natural. I'm making sure that my values are going lighter, then I'm watering down my paint a little more as I come towards the center of the bird's belly. As it approaches the light, it gets lighter. So you'll wanna pay attention to that and make sure that you're adding more water in the areas that are in the sunshine. I'm now adding some nice light gray, little brush strokes to indicate the beautiful feather texture on our bird's breast and just adding a few more brush strokes underneath his head. And then on the right side, I'm doing the same thing as I did on the left, just adding some nice dark brown and black stripes and spots. And always softening my edges using a clean, damp brush. So here I'm taking some watered down paint, just some nice light brown, softening some more. And then I'm going darker with the shadow on the right wing and adding some stripes adding a few more textures and details, sticking with my small brush for all of these little details. On the legs, we just need to go a little darker at the base where they're in the shadow. And just adding here and there a few more spots and stripes as I see them in the photo. But again, you can adjust these if you wanna have a more balanced composition. Now I'm adding some shadows underneath the little claws and underneath the foot. It still looks a little bit fake at this point, so we need to add some mid-tones. 
Now I'm taking a more watered down gray and just adding those mid-tones in, scumbling it in in the shape of fur and feathers on those little legs. I like to add little shadows when I'm painting something that's on a stark white background just so it feels like he's not floating, that he's solid and that he's heavy. And there's our finished little owl. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in the next one.